The story of humanity is progress, from the origins of humanity with slow disjointed progress, to the agricultural revolution with linear progress, and furthermore to the industrial revolution with exponential, almost unfathomable progress. What has led to this era of exponential accelerating progress is a positive feedback loop fed by two key factors. One, in each revolution, with each invention or piece of knowledge gained, allows for more to be built on top of, iterated on, and expanded on. 2. Progress enables a higher standard of living and allows people to specialize in different areas, leading to more progress. This trajectory of progress is now leading us into a time period that is characterized by a fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres, called by many the technological revolution or the fourth industrial revolution, in which everything will change from the underlying structure and fundamental institutions of society to how we live our day-to-day -day lives. What is now driving the acceleration of the progress feedback loop, and by extension this revolution, is the compounding effect of what we like to call the four pillars of the technological revolution, which have been at the core focus of this channel since its inception, that being computing, global connectivity, big data, and artificial intelligence. To better understand the impact the technological revolution will have on society, and the changes it will bring in the coming years and decades, let's break down these pillars and their importance to the technological revolution. This video is brought to you in thanks to NordPass, a password manager to store all your sensitive information. Additionally, consider visiting our parent company EarthOne for sustainable living made simple. The first pillar of the technological revolution is computing, which might seem confusing as it is associated with being the primary technology that drove the third industrial revolution. To understand why computing is a pillar of the technological revolution, we can liken it to the use of power. While power, that being work done from forces external to human labor, has been harnessed for hundreds of years from natural sources in the form of wind and water, the inflection point for its use came in the first industrial revolution with the invention of the steam engine, a more compact, consistent, and reliable source of energy. Due to these reasons, the steam engine was able to power new mechanical inventions and make existing processes better, impacting every aspect of society, for instance the textile industry, new transportation methods, etc. While clearly an important innovation, just as with wind and water mills, a core problem remained in that anyone who wanted to utilize power would have to set up the infrastructure for themselves, from the cost of the engine or mill itself, to hiring the workers to keep it running. And as such, it remained out of reach for the vast majority of the population, and in the hands of only a select few oligarchs. It wasn't until the second industrial revolution, when power, more specifically electrical power became a utility, that true change was sparked. With electricity as a utility, anyone could have access to power without having to generate it for themselves, which was essential in its mainstream adoption and thereby the progress of humanity. A factory could power their machines and scale it with production needs, an individual could power their appliances and lights, new inventions could be built that utilize that power, and so on and so forth. In relation to computing, while the invention of the digital computer took place in the third industrial revolution, we are now beginning to see its true potential due to the rise of cloud computing, in other words, computing as a utility, in which anyone can leverage the power of vast amounts of computational resources. Just as with electricity as a utility where an end user need not know what source their power is coming from, whether that be coal, solar, wind, etc., so too does this apply to cloud computing, in what is referred to as heterogeneous architecture. That being, the cloud is powered through a combination of CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, ASICs, and memory devices, each of which serve their own purpose and have been increasing in performance and efficiency over the decades due to shrinking transistors, new materials, 3D integrated circuits, new memory devices and standards, optimizations in software that are made to be tightly coupled with hardware, the list can go on and on. Beyond these classical compute technologies, new fields of computing able to truly operate in parallel will be utilized and are slowly starting to be used in the cloud as well. For instance, optical computing which will provide significant speedups in data transfer as well as compute devices, quantum computing which will be able to solve new types of problems and reduce the probability space and optimization problems, clockless parallel neuromorphic architectures which take inspiration from the brain and will provide significant performance and efficiency gains in artificial intelligence applications, as well as other new architectures we have not had the chance to discuss or not yet foreseen. The main point is that under heterogeneous architecture, all of these devices, architectures, standards, and paradigms will work together in the cloud based on the needs of the end user to provide maximum performance and efficiency for a desired task. Whether you're just an average user, a gamer, a scientist, a startup working on the next application to revolutionize the world, we can go on and on. This principle, cloud computing powered by heterogeneous architecture, is referred to as infinite computing. And beyond use for individuals and businesses, it also applies to our devices as well, such as mobile phones, IoT sensors, augmented reality glasses, robotics. The list is truly endless. 
Coming back to our power analogy, just as power requires infrastructure such as transformers and power lines to connect users and devices to the power grid, so too is infrastructure required to connect users and devices to the cloud, which comes in the form of the second pillar of the technological revolution, global connectivity. The second pillar of the technological revolution is global connectivity, which should come as no surprise, as long before digitization, increased connectivity between humans has been a primary driving force of the progress feedback loop. Recall one of the key factors of this feedback loop. In each revolution, what each invention or piece of knowledge gained allows for more to be built on top of, iterated on, and expanded on. In other words, the faster knowledge can spread around the world, and the more people it reaches accelerates the rate of progress. Throughout the history of humanity, we can mark the beginnings of new revolutions with the increase in the ability of knowledge to proliferate across the world. From only being shared in hunter-gatherer tribes and local communities, the spread of information accelerated across nations through trade via sea travel, and then accelerated again with technologies such as the automobile, air travel, and early telecommunications technologies such as the telegraph, telephone, radio, and television. In the late 20th century, built off the emergence of electronics and computing technology, came yet another iteration of these connective technologies, the mobile phone and internet. It spans the globe like a super highway. It is called internet. 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 Worldwide. What? I'm a bit of an internet junkie. Internet. Schminternet. What is Say internet that. anyway? The internet is a work in progress. And it only takes a few minutes until you're online. Having the internet in our home has had a great impact on our lives. Engineers now predict today will come when we get all our newspapers and magazines by home computer. But that's a few years off. Anything goes. Uh, anything goes. Exactly. Marking the beginning of the era of instantaneous knowledge transfer across anyone on the planet and the information age. The internet is a set of agreed upon protocols running on nearly every device on this planet. And as of December 2020, there were 4.95 billion connected users around the world. When we made our video on global connectivity, it was 3.7 billion in December 2016. At this rate of growth, the entire world will be connected to the internet by 2028, if not sooner with the help of initiatives with the primary goal of connecting the planet such as Starlink and OneWeb. In addition to the number of users connected, equally as important is the speed and latency of the internet connection. Starlink, for instance, aims to transmit speeds up to 10 gigabits per second, with latencies under 20 milliseconds. And beyond satellite constellations, network technologies all across the board are improving to bring higher speeds with low latency for more users. From better wireless standards, cellular networks such as 5G, and completely new technology still in development such as Li-Fi. On top of the impact these will have on physical users, this increase in connectivity speed and latency will have even greater impact on our internet connected devices, which to be noted have a rate of growth that far exceeds the number of connected users. A conservative estimate shows 30 billion connected devices in 2020, which are expected to reach 75 billion by 2025. From an engineering perspective and as an interesting side note, many changes have been made to account for this rate of growth, such as changing our internet addressing protocol from IPv4, able to uniquely address 2 to the 32, or just over 4 billion users and devices, to IPv6, able to address 2 to the 128, in other words, 340 trillion, trillion, trillion users and devices. Coming back on topic, with this mass increase in users and devices on the internet comes a third pillar of the technological revolution, big data. The third pillar of the technological revolution, big data, is a byproduct of the first and second pillars. Now data in and of itself is nothing new, it has been collected since the dawn of humanity, from cave paintings and being verbally passed down through the generations, to being written and stored in great libraries such as Alexandria. In the present day, big data is a result of the digitization of our world, and the ability to produce, store, and retrieve that data. This data can range from anything and everything, the digitization of books, our personal data from social media, health trackers, smart appliances, manufacturing sensors, farming sensors, smart cities, we can go on and on. The big and big data is given by how much data all of us and these devices in our society produce. At the end of 2020, a conservative estimate shows 60 zettabytes, that is 60 trillion gigabytes of data on the web. This translates to about 50 exabytes of data, or in other words, 50 billion gigabytes of data produced every day. By 2025, this number is expected to reach 463 exabytes of data per day, translating to nearly 170 zettabytes a year. At this rate, we are expected to reach the Yotabyte era, 1 quadrillion gigabytes by the end of 2030. And this might be underselling the true rate of growth of data as the number of internet connected devices continues to explode. These numbers are so large, to our brains they might as well be nonsensical, and to be honest, in large part, they are. Most data, more than 90% on the web is unstructured, meaning data that is unorganized and therefore much harder to draw conclusions and correlations from. This then is what takes us to our fourth and final pillar of the technological revolution, advanced algorithms such as AI, which are needed to process big data. 
The fourth and final pillar of the technological revolution is artificial intelligence. As the first pillar, the field of computing has evolved, so too have the fields of computer science and by extension software development. And from the inception of these fields, a major goal and driving force for many has been to imbue computers with intelligence comparable to humans. While the algorithms required to do so have been in development for many decades, and in theory feasible since the 1980s, they were limited by the technology of their time. And what has truly enabled this pillar has been the maturation of the other three pillars of the technological revolution. In terms of computing, there have been massive gains in compute power, efficiency, and storage, which have also been paired with many other innovations such as increasingly paralyzable hardware and software applications, streamlined software interfaces like TensorFlow and Keras, etc. These factors have led to the ability for these once just theoretical algorithms to actually be able to run, such as those in the field of deep learning, or as the mainstream public likes to label it, AI, with these algorithms able to process big data and in fact benefit and require it for training, which enables them to become smarter so to speak. For instance, neural networks by processing data acquire their own internal representations of it, that being the relevant features that describe it. Please note, this was clearly a very simplistic explanation of deep learning, and we highly recommend you watch our series on artificial intelligence to see the structure of these networks and how they actually work. Regardless of understanding how these algorithms internally work, the key takeaway is that now we have the computing capabilities for them to run, and have enough data for them to draw conclusions and correlations from. This data is coming as we discussed from the massive influx of new users and devices entering the digital ecosystem, which are producing data that describes just about every aspect of our world. By feeding in different types of datasets, these algorithms can be tuned for a variety of applications, from optimizing the way your processor caches data and branch prediction, to being able to detect cancer and other diseases early, to giving robots dexterity, the list is truly endless. One can say finding structure and data is a human condition, it's how we've come so far, and because of the aforementioned advances, now computers have this ability as well. With an understanding of the four pillars of the technological revolution, computing, global connectivity, big data, and artificial intelligence, we hope it is now more clear on how they are laying the foundation of the future and why humanity's exponential feedback loop of progress shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon. While it may seem like a period of slower development right now, this is because the technologies in these pillars have been maturing. Revolutions can be thought of as stacked S-curves, with slow starts, rapid growth in the middle, and then slow growth towards the end where technologies and knowledge mature and lead to the growth of the next revolution. As computing and the larger field of electronics from the third industrial revolution have matured, it has become one of the most important pillars of the technological revolution, and enabled the other three. For a layman's summary, as computers got more advanced and were made in increasing quantities, a desire to use them for communication and to share data with one another emerged. This led to the birth of the field of networking and by extension the development of the internet. At the same time, computers and electronics became smaller, more portable, and affordable, which enabled them to be brought to the mass market. This continual increase in the amount of internet-connected users and devices has led to far more data creation than anyone could have predicted. And while much of this data is unstructured, due to advances in fields such as computer science, we now have the ability to process this data and draw conclusions and correlations from it. Once again, please note, this is a reductionist summary of the series of events, but the key takeaway remains that now these pillars have matured to the point where they are having adverse effects of their own and fueling the growth phase of the S-curve. Quite potentially, one of the largest effects that will be seen, and at the same time one that many are not considering, is the addition of the entire population of the world, 8 billion people, to the literate, internet-connected community. Nowadays, access to the internet has been democratized, where anyone could gain access to all of humanity's knowledge with devices as small as a smartphone. And access to this knowledge as stated in our progress feedback loop propels us forward into even more knowledge, new technologies, and innovations. The internet also serves as the infrastructure for computing as a utility, infinite computing, with what now matters is not obtaining computational resources themselves, but what can be built on top of it. Infinite computing paired with global connectivity at high speeds and low latencies, beyond assisting ourselves getting smarter, also translates to our devices. This due to the concept of edge devices, essentially any device connected to the cloud. Devices are already getting more powerful due to increases in computing, and by becoming an edge device this will only accelerate as attributable to the third and fourth pillars of the technological revolution, that being the data these devices collect will get sent to the cloud to better train the algorithms required for their desired task, whether that be controlling lights for energy efficiency, pedestrian detection and self-driving cars, and so on. Infinite computing also means that people can access the latest innovations, for instance, quantum computing. Paired with big data and artificial intelligence, this can lead to huge breakthroughs in fields like biotech with applications like protein folding. And with global connectivity, this knowledge, discoveries, and its applications can be shared around the world instantaneously. We've only just touched the surface here of the numerous ways these pillars of the technological revolution interact with one another. 
Progress has an accelerating rate of change due to the compounding effect of these technologies, in which they will enable countless more, from 3D printing, autonomous vehicles, blockchain, batteries, remote surgeries, virtual and augmented reality, robotics, the list can go on and on. These devices will turn lead to mass changes in society, from energy generation, monetary systems, space colonization, and much more. All of these topics and then some will be covered in videos of their own in the future. For instance, the next video in the series on automation, which is often confused with being the technological revolution in and of itself, as it is what the mainstream focuses on, and for good reason, as how we handle automation will determine the trajectory our collective future takes. Now before concluding, please note we covered a lot in this video, and as usual, in a video of this scale, many generalizations were made. Please see the sources in the description if you wish to learn more, and if you want more in-depth explanations on the various topics covered in this video, we highly recommend you check out all our past videos on this channel, organized in playlists of the pillars, computing, global connectivity, big data, and AI. Now just as we in these videos have a goal of simplifying complex information, so too is this needed when managing your secure information online. In today's increasingly digital world, using the same password for everything leaves all your accounts susceptible to hacking. However, creating and remembering unique and elaborate passwords for every website would be a major hassle. This is where tools such as password managers come into play, such as the one brought to you by the sponsor of this video, NordPass, from the same cybersecurity experts who built NordVPN and trusted by more than 14 million users worldwide. NordPass allows you to store and organize your passwords, credit card information, and private notes in a secure, encrypted vault. And whenever you need to access that information, simply tap a button for it to autofill for you. It also comes with a password generator so you can create strong passwords that are completely random and impossible to guess. While the free plan includes the aforementioned features, the premium plan of NordPass is where this password manager truly shines, giving you access to additional tools such as a password health monitor, data breach scanner, and suspicious website detector. Not to mention one of the coolest features, the ability to share secure information with others. By adding trusted contacts to your account, you can send them a link to an item in your vault, such as your Netflix password, that remains encrypted and can be revoked by you at any time. To support Futurology and learn more about NordPass, go to nordpass.com slash futurology. By using this link and entering promo code Futurology at checkout, you will save 70%, as well as get one additional month to your plan for free. At this point, the video has concluded. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch it. If you enjoyed it, consider supporting us on Patreon or YouTube membership to keep this brand growing. And if you have any topic suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Consider subscribing for more content and check out our website and parent company Earth One for more information. This has been Encore, you've been watching Futurology, and we'll see you again soon.